Hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog, brought to you by Gate City Bank with the forum's Jeff Kolpak. I'm Dom Izzo from WDAY Sports. We're ready for round 116 between the University mm. of North Dakota and North Dakota State University. How many you got here? How many you been on now? 30? 30 hit, some. 30 at Yeah, I stopped 35? counting. We stopped counting after 30. <laughs> well, we had a long gap for 20 years, and now it's uh, round six for the Division One entrance, which we'll get full into the rivalry here in just a second. NDSU Jeff off a big road win, 38-10 to over Missouri State. You call it a get-well game, but the vibes are certainly different on this Monday as opposed to last Monday off the loss at USD. And now into a... A loud environment. I know you asked Matt answer this mm -hmm. at his press conference that we just wrapped up a little bit ago. This is unlike any venue, maybe Northern Iowa, that they're going to face this season. Well, yeah, and, and you talk about the FCS. You could probably what, put three venues maybe that where noise is a factor. The Fargo Dome yep. one, the Alaris Center, the other one, yep. Washington Grizzly, I think at Montana. South Dakota State's been sold out this year yeah. and, and it's really been good home environment. I've never seen Northern Iowa really massively yeah. affect it too much as far as NDSU's offense, but it affected NDSU certainly uh, two yeah. years ago, and they admitted that, that yeah. they were not prepared yeah. going into the Alaris and dealing with the noise, whether they did the clap yep. or the hand signal. They, just, they weren't all on the same page. That was confirmed today by the head yeah. coach, and and so obviously that's something that they'll they'll, they'll, they'll certainly be better prepared this year just because they've been working on it, and they spent uh, it started today with practice. And actually, he said it even started during the off season right. that they were doing that inside the indoor facility. Reminder, Quincy Patterson was the starting quarterback for that game. He played almost the entire game. Cam Miller got in for one play and actually completed a pass to Noah Gindorf. So, of all the experience, Cam Miller has had 30 career starts. This is his first time at the Alaris Center coming up on Saturday. Yeah, and, and the first time dealing with the noise. Yeah. And I, you know, I felt like the Quincy Patterson thing, that was the last straw, if you will, after the UND game. Obviously, the Hawks figured out that the guy wasn't the greatest mm. thrower at all mm -hmm. and uh, probably pressed down a little more and and then I think it was Missouri State game the next yeah, week. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks when, later he was gone. Couple, when Cam camp, Miller yeah. took over. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of silent count. It's going to take a lot of poise. But he is in his fourth year yeah. on the program. Now that you have a rookie quarterback Correct. out there. And I would expect him to be able to handle the noise yeah. and, and whether they're effective, we'll see. So far, the Bison have the best takeaway giveaway in the country at right. plus 10. We didn't make it. I mean, they had four forced turnovers. Logan Kopp was a huge factor. He was named the Defensive Player of the Week by the Missouri Valley today. That's given the offense extra times with the ball. We lamented this a couple years ago when NDSU couldn't turn the football over. They've done that in spades so far in 2023. Well, it's a big stat. It's yeah. a, that, that's a winning football yeah. stat when you look at turnover margin. At uh, 10 turnovers uh, they've forced and, and only given uh, up once. That one interception yeah. against South Dakota. And that's going to have to continue, especially on the road. When, when you go into that environment, those momentum changing oh plays man. can really be huge and you know it's a rivalry game yeah, Dom right can we is. can we say it's a rivalry <laughs> game and, and especially in a rivalry game when uh, it's going to be I tell you well as Craig Bull would say Dom it's going to be a four-quarter game <laughs> Did you get an answer on looking to the sideline? I've had numerous emails, I think you have as well, over the last couple of weeks about, because that started the week of the South Dakota game with the offense looking over to the sideline. That was something that was Matt Ants introduced and seems like it's now coming to work over the last couple of weeks. Well, it's something they put in in the offseason, yeah. too. That's when yep. the head coach, I think he told his staff, maybe you should try this. Yeah. And when you sh maybe, I mean, it's yes, <laughs> you, you better try this. You better do it. What it does, though, is it gives them another opportunity to yeah. adjust to what the uh, the, uh, the opposing defense has on the field. And uh, and when asked uh, Matt Entz today, when I asked him about it, he said maybe it leads to better efficiency mm -hmm. in the passing game. And, and I guess you can't argue with that because Cam Miller leads Boy. the country in passing efficiency in the FCS. 78.5 completion percentage. I mean, that's, and they, we're not talking dink and dunk throws, especially Saturday. He was going down the field, uh, completing passes. He's been uh, the one interception against USD, notwithstanding. I think he's been excellent in 2000. And this is a matchup of, of, of yep. top five quarterbacks yep. in passing efficiency. Tommy Schuster is no yeah. slouch. He's number five in the FCS in that statistic. And what 73% is he? Completion yeah, percentage. 96 yeah, 96 to 132. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, this is outstanding marksmanship yeah. by, by two quarterbacks that uh, you, you, the guy that's kind of, if you can get over 60%, right. that's pretty good. 65% is the goal. And these guys are in the 70s. Yeah. In the case of Cam right. Miller, the high 70s. Yeah, that's wild. 
All right, here's UND. Three and two Fighting Hawks won last week against Western Illinois. Their two losses came to Boise State and South Dakota State. They're led by Tommy Schuster, as Colpack mentioned, in his fourth year as the starting quarterback. We know the wide receiver in Bo Belquist. He scored touchdowns each of the last three years against the Bison. What do we make of the 2023 version of Bubba Schweigert's? Well, football I think Bo Belquist is one of the best receivers in the yeah. FCS, and he's played well in the Bison game. In the three games against yeah. NDSU, he has 10 receptions, two touchdowns, touchdowns a uh, 63 yard long play I mean this guy ha has been pretty effective in, in this game and so that's got to be target number one for NDSU and and a lot of it's little short stuff that he's so athletic and I know we're looking at UND's D but Bo Belquist is so athletic that he'll turn a short gain and yep. make something of it yep the interesting part to me is the running game I'm intrigued about that now a couple years ago it was Moorhead's Otis Wea was the back last year was a different combo of deals Gavin Zebarth, guy from Cambridge, Minnesota, has kind of emerged as their top guy. Luke Skokin is healthy. We might see him. I'm intrigued to see what they have running the football, how they're going to attack the Bison defense. Zebarth's averaging 7.2 yeah. yards a carry. Yeah. That's outstanding. Yeah. I thought Isaiah Smith would be their guy this year. Yeah. And apparently it just really hasn't come to fruition. Uh, Zebar, uh, tough runner, yeah. I think, and he, he gets some tough yards. 7.2 a game or uh, per carry, that's Really nothing to sneeze at, and and I guess this game, as it usually does, will come down to whoever has a better running game. The Bison had it enough in 2021. Yeah, they certainly had they it They had a guy year. named Hunter Lipke, yeah. who yeah. was pretty good. Yeah, I look back at the the game last year, UND defense, Cole Pack, just at that point, it was the last game of the regular season, was beat up, but they were certainly victimized in the back end. I don't know how much better they are there. That's to me where I think the game could be won or lost for UND. How does their back end match up with NDSU's offense? That's where I'm really interested. Especially well, now if the buys are going to wing it and they're going to throw it more, which yeah, they have. I guess passing defense, 68th in the country, that might be a stat to, yeah. to look at. And you have a, a guy who's been pretty accurate coming in. Right. Uh, you're going against a 3-4 defense. Correct. And I've always been told that the, the best way to do a 3-4 defense and what South Dakota State did it, 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 is spread, spread them out, them out. Yep. and do the little short passes yep. of the flat. And if they're, if, they're, you know, uh, if they're bringing their linebackers from the outside, which I think they probably often yep. do, and especially in this series, it, you got to be prepared for that. I am intrigued, though. Schuster is starting now. This is his third start against mm -hmm. NDSU. He is not a guy to get out on the run. He likes it to quick and go. The quick game is certainly how he likes to get it. And when the Bison defensive line has not gotten home, that to me could be a real defining trait of how this football game may be played out on Saturday. That's a great point. That's a great matchup. Yeah. Will NDSU's D-line uh, hurry? I think at Missouri State, they at least hurried yes. Peshaw yep. enough to where he maybe made a couple he bad decisions. Yep, yep, yep. But we haven't seen him get home really on a, on a straight straight just rush, a rush right. just a bull yeah, rush or, right. or beating somebody yep. to the outside haven't seen that a whole lot this year and then really a lot of the pressures have come from blitzes you always know offensive coordinator for UND Danny Freund will throw something in there'll be a yep. trick play, expect it. something like that I thought to me there were two really interesting points in that game up there two years ago UND's decision to go for was it fourth and one at their own 29 yard line and they didn't get it and NDSU got the ball but only got a field goal out of that that to me kept UND's hopes in it but there were a couple decisions in that football and I fully intend this is going to be a tight game I really I don't I think the game last year is an aberration I think this is going to be a tight football game on Saturday so what you're saying is Bubba Schweiger went a little out of context out of character by going I for thought, it I thought so a couple deep years ago. and there's the old yeah. adage you can't coach a big game or you can't play a big game like a big, like game. A big game you got to do what you do yep. and I thought maybe Bubba got a little out of character there he's a conservative guy by nature and I just don't think that um, you know that's really what they do and, and really if you punt it their defense is playing so well right you're gonna get but it your back defense, anyway your defense mm. their defense was playing great that day it just and you mentioned that though the Quincy Patterson factor I don't think could be underestimated that that's I think when the worm started to turn the other way for specifically the bison coaches say all right this may not be a long-term answer at the quarterback spot. Well, right, and right. I, and again, I think UND exposed yes. the the Quincy yeah. Patterson situation for what it was, and and make him throw and yeah. make him do some stuff like that. I, uh, Cam Miller, uh, you know, he hung in there. Give him credit, and uh, you know, two weeks later, came back against Missouri State. He's been the guy ever since. Didn't transfer. No, I had, had opportunities. It didn't transfer. Let me ask you this, because I I think for the current generation of players, certainly fans, this is not the rivalry game. How about on the outside for friends of yours, people who brought – where is the stock, the interest level know. in this football I, I game? I don't know. I, I, it's not like it used to be. I certainly mean, not. It's certainly not. There's no trophy. There's no, no. nickel trophy. 
we have the nickel <laughs> trophy somewhere. Uh, so I just, no, NDSU's number one rival, in my opinion, yes. is South Dakota yeah. State because South Dakota State has what they want. Yep. They're the defending national right. champions. Yep. They've beaten NDSU over the years. They've been, uh, they surpassed them, I think, in a lot of areas. Yep. And NDSU is now chasing the defending yeah. champions. It's not UND yet. It's, it's it's South Dakota State. That's just the way it is. UND's only beaten one of the Dakotas in the Division One era. They beat South Dakota State, uh, not counting USD, uh, South Dakota State, North Dakota State once, and that was in the COVID season of February 2021. How big is this game for each of these teams? Let's start first on the UND side because they still have Northern Iowa and USD after this. This is a biggie for UND. Oh, it's a biggie for both. I yeah. mean, look at the standings. They're right. both one and one. Right. It's, it's, it's early a little bit, but it's not early. You're getting toward mid-October now. Well, you've got the tiebreaker on this team. Who, obviously, whoever wins, and we, we think each of these teams will probably get another loss as we go forward. At least I do as the season goes forward. We think South Dakota yeah. State's going to probably run the, run the table. Yeah, they're, they're uh, looking like right now that they're not going to lose. So now you're game. looking at, okay, the number two, number three seed, and, and, and you're right. This is big for when you're looking down the yeah. line. Northern Iowa's in there. Youngstown might make a push yeah. here. Uh, NDSU. SIU's still in the mix. If you want a home game, if you want to be yeah. seated, right. you got to win this game. And that's, a, I think, for the Bison side of things as well, Jeff, knowing that full well, they have the game still with – because after, after this week, there's probably a good bet. If the Bison get this – they're going to be 7-1 and one going to Brookings and setting up for those last three games with SDSU, Southern Illinois, and Northern Iowa. That's why this game is such a linchpin, I think, in the Bison football season. And if you look at UND, uh, you, it's already two losses. Right. And you, you can't really go to three. I mean, that's uh, you can, but you, can, but you, then might, you, gotta, you might be hitting right. the road. Got, the wiggle room is almost gone. Seven still is the magic number to me. I think if you're 7-4 and four in the Missouri Valley, that you're you in. get in. But Youngstown State rolled the dice of that last year. They were seven and four and got left out. That's you just don't want to leave it in the committee's hands. You want to take care of business on the field. A huge week of coverage is on tap. Jeff, Mike, and Eric Peterson have stories all week long at inforum.com. We'll of course have you covered on WDAY. And yes, we're back on TV this week. Bison game day gets a start at 10 a.m. And then the how many how game. many comments was it? Well, we got plenty. Yes. We got plenty of phone calls. I forwarded them all to you. I didn't you get it? <laughs> no, I didn't. The, the game is on WDAY. Uh, kickoff show at 12:50 and the kickoff at one o'clock from the Alaris Center in Grand Forks between NDSU and UND. For Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog, brought to you by Gate City Bank.